Welcome to Sunday Service Church. Hope you're having a wonderful Sunday. Hope everyone's waking up <laughs> bright and early. Uh, this isn't that early, right? <laughs> you guys can do it. Before we go into any scene, before we go into any worship, uh, just um, before we celebrate who the Lord is and His faithfulness, and his, uh, and that He is constant in all these things, I just want to invite us just to take a moment to uh, prepare our hearts. If you're anything like me, uh, um, if I'm at home, it's hard for me to worship really because um, I don't know. Just because when you're at home, you feel more. Uh, you feel more. You feel more like you want to rest. You want to do other things. You just want to. So it's a hard. It's hard to really focus on worship. And I know I think a lot of us can relate to that, especially you know because that's our comfort zone. That's our comfort area. So just church, if I could ask us just to take this moment just to really remember what we're, where we're at. We're at church, okay, uh, which is not necessarily building, but we as God's people are here to set aside this time to worship the Lord. So let's set aside that time right now. Give us a minute or two. Father, we just want to thank you so much that we have this time to praise you, Lord. We have this time to give thanks to you, to celebrate who you are and what you've done on the cross for our lives. As we praise you, God, we just ask that you just take the light in the offering of our hearts, in the confession of our lips, to declare who you are. We praise your name. All these things we say in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. You never change. You never fail, oh God. True are your promises. True are your promises. You never change. You never fail, oh God. We raise up holy hands to praise the Holy One who was and is and is to come. Yeah, we raise up holy hands to praise the Holy One was and is and is to come. Wide is your love. Wide is your love and grace. Wide is your love and grace. You never change. You never fail, oh God. Let's sing that again, church. Wide is your love. Wide is your love and grace. What is your love and grace? 
you never change, you never fail, oh God, yeah. So we raise up holy hands to praise the Holy One who was and is and is to come. Yeah, we raise up holy hands to praise the Holy One who was and is and is to come. See this together. You were, you are, you will always be. You were, you are, you will always be. You were, you were, you are, you will always be. Yes, Lord. You were, you are, you will always be. So we raise up holy. Praise the Holy One who was and is and is to come. Yeah, we raise up holy hands to praise the Holy One who was and is and is to come. We declare that, Lord, we raise up. So we raise up holy hands to praise the Holy One who was and is and is to come. We raise up, yeah, we raise up holy hands to praise the Holy One who was. Who was and is, and is to come. Who was and is, to come. Hallelujah. So let them clap off each one, God, if you are able. Why don't we just worship the Lord, hands up. Yes, God. You are worthy. Church, just wanted to... Uh, introduce you to a new song as we confess on Friday that the Lord is the everlasting God. Um, interestingly enough, this song is actually titled the same, Everlasting God. Uh, but unlike uh, Chris Tomlin's iconic old Everlasting God that, with that famous solo, <laughs> uh, this one is actually a bit more, it's very... Um, I, I first heard this song in college and it's so heartfelt. There's no other way I can say it. Just, it's better if I read it to you, but these lyrics are so beautiful. It's just, it just describes who our God is, even despite the troubles that are in our lives. One thing I know that I have found, through all the troubles that surround, you are the rock that never fails. You never fail. One thing I know that I believe, through every blessing I receive, you are the only one that stays, you always stay. I can't wait to show you guys this song. But why don't we just take this moment just to reflect on the God that never changes, that stays the same. The God that is everlasting. One thing I know. One thing I know that I have found through all the troubles that surround. You are the rock that never fails. You never fail. One thing I know that I believe through every blessing I receive. 
and a nice melody. More than the sweetest of words. This is the love I have found. And in this love I am found. And I just want you, Jesus. I just want you, my I just want you, Jesus. I just want you. Never could I comprehend this love you so freely gave. Could I be worthy? But your love covers all of my sin. I just want you, Jesus. I just want you, my Lord. And I just want you. I just want you. There's no greater love. There is no greater love than yours. Nothing else could ever compare. Even if I search all the find the love like yours. There is no greater love. There is no greater love than yours. Nothing else could ever compare. Oh, even if I search all the world, I could never find the love like I just want you, Jesus. I just want you, my Lord. I just want you, Jesus. I just want you. I just want you. God, we declare that we want, that's the one thing we desire. As it says in Psalms 27, God, just to that iconic, that, that passage in the Bible, one thing I ask, one thing I desire, one thing I seek is to gaze upon the beauty of your majesty, the holy temple where you are, God, to just be with you, Father, as that psalm just suggests for us to just be with you, just to just to spend our lives just, just gazing at you, just to be in your presence, God just to revel, to marvel at who you are. We love you, God, and we desire that, just to be with you and declare your praise, Father God. And as the song says, our weapon is a melody, Father, against the, the forces of darkness, against the principalities of, uh, of this world, all, these, all the evil in this world, Father God, all the temptations that are trying to just to, to stop us, to thwart your, your glory, Father God. It cannot, Father God, be blocked, Father God. We may be quarantined in our homes, but our praise will not be quarantined. Our praise will not be blocked, God. We declare that in Jesus' name. We declare that in the name of your, of your Son, Father God. So, Lord, as we continue to declare these things, God, continue to, Father God, feed us your word, feed us your scripture, Father. We pray and we ask, God, that you be delighted in our worship. Father God, that you would continue to open our hearts to you, Father. We thank you in all these things we pray in Jesus' name.
right. Hello, everyone. Okay, so before we go on to our, our sermon, our message, uh, there's a few announcements. All right, so um, I'm sure it's been about a month now that we've been um, doing our online service. And so you guys know the drill. Let's take this seriously as a JB teacher has been announcing and telling us. Um, this is an act of worship. Church is not just, you know, a building. Church is not where we just come together, at, like, at a church or anything like that. Church is where you are able to worship God. Church is where you're able to stand before God and just sit down and, and have a one-on-one -on -one with God. So that's what we ask that's what I'm asking you guys to do as well right now. Don't get distracted. Don't get distracted with your phones or anything like that. All right, so a few announcements, though. So, um... So if you guys have not joined our Facebook page, it, please join our Facebook page. It is go to Facebook, LOLMC, uh, and go, uh, youth at LOLMC. So LOLC Youth, if you find it on Facebook, you're going to find it. And so uh, I upload like devotionals up there, and uh, there's four podcasts so far. And speaking of the podcast, if you guys have any questions that you guys want to ask, please ask those questions, anything about religion, about God, about you know just life in general, or if you just want to ask questions about me. I think that we're going to do a Q&A uh, uh, podcast sometime soon as well. And so please do that. And um, right now, like I've been saying, we cannot do, you know, offering. I can't pass around the plate or, or offering basket or anything like that. So um, go to our church website and uh, give our uh, give offering that way. Our church website, uh, there should be a small button at the very top, blue button that says offering. So click that and help out your parents. And not only that, but uh, I believe starting from either this week or next week, uh, we're going to implement Venmo. So if you guys had Venmo, we're going to take care of, uh, do all those things as well. And um, <clears throat> it's going to be uh, uh, if, yeah, we'll, we'll let you guys know what that is, and I'll let you guys know very soon. But also, lastly, uh, throughout this whole quarantine time, if, yes, it is quarantine. Yes, we're saying, oh, social distancing, but we're not really socially distant, all right? Try to stay in touch with me, talk to me, you know, catch up with me. There's a few of you guys that actually text me and, and just say, hello, please do that, all right? All right, so <clears throat> hopefully uh, you guys are well at home, safe at home, and um Maybe some of you guys are bored, but you know this. I think starting from this week and also next week, it's slowly gonna get hotter and hotter and hotter. Meaning summer is coming, right? Winter's not. Uh, winter is gone, and now summer is coming. And summer means bugs. And summer means bugs are slowly gonna come out. And the other day, I was in my room chilling. I was doing my own thing. At 1 a.m. in the morning, a huge bug was in my room. And I went to the bathroom and came back in my room, and all of a sudden, this, this bug was flying around, and I was like, oh, God, what do I do? All right, so I stood still to wait until I saw the moment it landed. I'm going to kill it. But that bug was sw swirling around, and it landed on my arm, and I freaked out. And I was like, oh, my goodness, what the? And that was a crazy 1 a.m. experience. It wasn't a tiny bug. It was like, like, it was the size of my thumb. It was huge. It was, I, I don't know if it was beetle or something like that, but it was kind of, so I had to open up the doors and windows and just uh, swat it out. Man, it was, it was a crazy experience. And then I ended up thinking about all of the things that most people are scared of. Right? And I think it started to think about what am I scared of because of that bug. There's a lot of people who are terrified of bugs. They cannot do anything about bugs and they just hate them completely. And I ended up thinking about fears and maybe what you guys fear, right? Because there's things in our lives that we're afraid of, that we're kind of terrified of. Um, and some of us, we've been walking with the Lord for quite some time, and you guys fear less things than most people. You guys know that, oh, God's in control, God, everything's okay. But yet, there are times in our lives where fear just completely grips our heart, right? And especially when we're thinking about our life, our family, our future, or when, especially, I believe we're afraid the most when we're uncertain about certain things, right? And there might be some fear about, uh, about you know, like your, which college you guys might go to or whatever it is. So today I want to talk about this thing, that if our faith is functioning correctly or well, if our faith is strong, if our faith is healthy, it doesn't fear, right? So I'm not, I'm not saying that if we fear, we're miserable failures. I'm not talking about that and I'm not saying that. But the enemy tries to play on our fear and... Our flesh is alive, and, you know, that's what we need to daily crucify it. But sometimes we do fear. Sometimes we get anxiety. Sometimes we start worrying. And we have to remember that those things are not from the Lord. 
those things are not from God. And fear is not from the Lord. Throughout scripture, it constantly tells us, do not be afraid, do not fear, do not fear, do not fear. And so we, we see so many times in scripture, God just telling us, hey, trust me, do not fear, don't be afraid of the world. All right? But there are other times in, in scripture where God says, hey, you should fear God. But that fear doesn't mean to be afraid of God, but that fear means to honor and respect and glorify God, have this great appreciation towards God. But this fear, when it comes to worry and anxiety and doubt, those things are from the enemy. And that's, that's, not, that's not what we're supposed to have. And we're called to have faith and not fear. And so we're, we've been walking our way through literally like walking our way through Hebrews chapter 11, right? And so we're going to be looking at that again. And so, um, and honestly, I could probably preach Hebrews chapter 11 within, like, probably with one sermon. I could just get it out of the way and just done. But uh, we're take, slowly, we're taking our time through chapter, Hebrews chapter 11 on purpose. And by doing so, we're able to see all these different people, all these different people, how they have faith, how they're able to uh, walk with the Lord. And I really believe our our, our Lord, our God was wanting us to spend time, considerable time in this chapter. So that's why we're doing it. And, and so because we're doing that, we're able to talk about people like Enoch, Noah, Moses, Abraham, and seeing how great faith they had. So well, we're going to keep on doing that and keep on diving deeper and deeper and deeper. And so if you have your Bibles, open up to Hebrews chapter 11. And, and, um, and I think this is very important. These things that we're talking about are very important because especially in this pandemic, you know, after this whole thing boils over, we will need to know how to have faith. And these people had faith in the midst of the craziness happening in their lives. And so I, this is, I think it's by no coincidence that God is allowing us to study through this whole chapter. And so we've been talking, last week was Easter, and so we didn't really cover Hebrews chapter 11. But um, two weeks ago, we saw the faith of Moses' parents. Uh, like three weeks ago, we saw the faith of Moses' parents. And then we saw um, faith of, of Moses, how he chose, you know, right? So we're learning a lot about all these things. Honestly, if we didn't talk about this, we, you guys wouldn't have known the name Amram and Jochebed, right? They're Moses' parents. They're pretty much nobodies. Um, and two weeks ago, we, we learned about Moses. He um, decided to get rid of that title and not be royalty anymore, give up the riches and money and so on and so forth. And he's looking at God, and he decided to be where God is. And that was crazy. And, and so here we are, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27. It says, By faith he left Egypt, not fearing God, uh, the king's anger. He preserved, uh, persevered because he saw him who is invisible. So what we hear, see here once again is that faith does not fear. By faith he left Egypt. Right? And this might cause you guys to cause it should cause us to question a little bit maybe you didn't really think about this in exodus throughout exodus um it says here by faith he left egypt not fearing the king's anger but this is interesting because moses he's actually a man full of fear he was always terrified he was full of fear because if you look at the book of exodus um the reason why he runs it away from egypt is because he kills an egyptian man and he knows that, like he is known, he's found out that he killed that Egyptian man. And that fear of being caught, being killed, makes him run away. And for 40 years, he lives in the desert. For 40 years, he's, um, he's a shepherd. For 40 years, he's in fear, oh, is a pharaoh going to come and kill me? But how is he able to, how was he able to return and, and go back and have this boldness to proclaim the word of God? Right? How, how, what change is it? What caused this change? And I think the answer is found in Exodus chapter 3. Moses is now out of Egypt, and now he's living in the land of Midian. And he's, for many, many years he was there, and he was tending the, uh, the flock of Jer uh, uh, Jethro, the, his father-in-law. And for 40 years he was living in the desert. He was a shepherd tending sheep. And maybe, you know, honestly, Moses might have been enjoying his life. That's quiet life. He was hiding away from all those things. But yet, even though he was comfortable, he probably was terrified. He was afraid. But God calls him. So if you turn, to, turn with me to Exodus chapter 3. It's the second book of the Bible. Exodus chapter 3, verse 2. It says, There an angel of the Lord appeared uh, in flames of fire from within a bush. 
Moses saw that although the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. You see, it is often when, it, like, the most mundane and simple times, when we least expect God, God shows up. And I think this is the same, same thing with Moses. Moses did not expect God to show up right here, but God did show up right, right there and then. This would have been a pivotal moment for Moses. Out of nowhere, on the backside of the mountain, you know, out of nowhere, just God appears. Right? And it, it's, it's for Moses, it's just another day. He's just walking around or whatever, and then all of a sudden he encounters God. Let me tell you guys, you can never expect, you can never understand, like never know when God's going to encounter you. And when you actually have one of those moments, it's going to be a life-changing moment. And maybe some of you already had those experiences, maybe during retreat, maybe during revival nights or whatever it is. You guys have this incredible moment with God and it shook your life and you want to dedicate your life. Even though it's hard to dedicate your life, you're still doing it. And you're coming before God and doing all those things for God and praising God and looking at God and only at God. And this is, is happening to Moses at the age of around 80. So right now, Moses is getting this invitation that would change his life. He Honestly, Moses did nothing for the 40 years of his life while he was out in the desert. He did absolutely nothing. And here it says, the angel of the Lord appeared before Moses. So in verse 3, so Moses thought, I'll go, go over there and see this strange sight, why this bush does not burn up. And I'm sure Moses didn't really say this. Because, you know, if you saw a burning bush that's not burning up, like, would you really say it like this? No, I'll go over there and look at that strange bush, strange sight, right toe. Like, he, he's not going to say something like that, right? He mostly, most likely would say something like, holy smokes. Do you see that? Get it? Holy smoke. Okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, he, 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 was, he was a shepherd. And so most, and then shepherds were actually known to actually talk to their flock, talk to their sheep. Because, you know, like, they were lonely. They're all by themselves for hours and hours and hours. So most likely he would have been with his sheep and be like, hey, Fluffy, do you see that over there? I'm not the only one that's seeing that, right? Let's go check it out. So, so Moses, Moses most likely was talking to his sheep and kind of, like, more other people were like, is he, is he going crazy? But I don't know. But... You know, like, this, this, is, this is a spectacular event, and he's seeing something crazy, something weird, right? And so maybe for us, like, we're just like, yeah, so what? It's just a burning bush. Like, what of it? But it's a little different because if you're out in the desert and you see, there's, you see a fire, actually ha fires happen a lot in the desert because everything is dry, and if something is that dry, everything goes in flames, like, boom, just like that. And it burns up, and it's, Real quick, within like 10 seconds, it's done. So like, I don't know about you guys, but Christmas, I'm not sure if you guys do Christmas trees. But when I was younger, I didn't do Christmas trees, but my friends did Christmas trees, and they had a huge, huge house. And they had a huge house, and they decided to fill their house with a 13-foot, um, like, Christmas tree. It was huge. But not only did they have one, but they had like about three or two, two smaller ones and one huge one for what every reason and they so they put put that christmas tree up around the end of um uh, by the time thanksgiving is over so uh and so they have that tree for a very long time so by the end of january that tree is almost dying and it's kind of like all getting brown and so by february it's completely brown and so we take that tree outside um my friend would call me over and like hey jay we have this tree one burned up and i'm like of course, like, you know, it, it's so much, it was so much fun playing with fire when I was younger, all right? So, <clears throat> like, we would take that tree, we'd pick it outside in the middle of nowhere. There was no other trees, no other vegetations or anything like that. So we put that completely, like, three dried trees out in the middle of nowhere and light a small fire and whoosh, it all catches on fire. And it's gone instantly, just like that. And that was the exact same thing with Moses as well. He is used to seeing all bushes just gone. But this fire wasn't going away. It was a little different. So he's just like, huh, I need to go over there. All right, I got to see this. I got to understand this. So Fluffy, let's go, let's go together. Let's go. Let's go. And so in verse 4, uh, four it says, um, when the Lord saw that uh, he had gone over to look, God called him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. So I want you guys to understand this. God 
did not speak to Moses until God had Moses' attention. Do you see that? It wasn't until Moses chose to come closer to listen. That's when God spoke to him. Right? Because, you know, God, you know, he could have just spoken to Moses at any time, at any moment. But it was when Moses, Moses could have been like, whatever, I'm going to keep walking. I don't, I don't care about that bush. But Moses looked at that and was like, huh, I'm going to choose to go look. And he heard the voice of God and he obeyed. And he finally listened. Other people might have heard, the, heard a voice and ran the other direction. But Moses stayed and listened. And that's when God talked. And that is the same with us. Right? That is the same with us. Because even Moses, he could have saw that thing from a distance. Like, oh, that's cool. Or that's not burning. All right, cool. And that could have just been an event. And that could have been something that's going on. And he could have gone home and told his kids and his wife. Like, you know, the, like, as I was out there in the desert, I saw a bush that wasn't burning. Oh, that's cool. That's okay. Cool. Right? That can happen to us too. As we're here at church, whenever you guys are, are, wherever you guys are worshiping, but once this whole quarantine thing is over, we might come to church, we might have revival, we might have, you know, go back to, go to retreats and all that stuff. But all those things might just be events, just like Moses. It could have been an event for Moses. Moses could have just looked at that and just said, oh, that's cool. We could do the same thing with with our revivals or worship or anything like it could just become an event we could have just been like oh you know that was, that was a cool thing but yeah yeah uh, that, that, that just happened yeah that's cool but for god to speak to any of us we have to choose to come closer to him and open up our hearts to listen that's why i think it's, it's no coincidence that jesus actually said those who have ears let them hear only those who want to actually listen will listen and that, that's the same with us, with our relationship with God. You know, we, like, I, I realize that a lot of times we want just worship experiences. I want to feel this thing from God. And that's it. We want that burning bush excitement. And that's it. We just want to see that spectacle that was crazy thing that was cool. That's retreats, revivals. That was cool. But did you get closer to him? Did you choose to get closer? And did you actually go for God or did you go for the event because your friends are going, because of whatever? You see, because there's more than that, more than just the event. Because God wants our attention. He wants us to be like, I want more. I need more. I want to experience more. I want to feel the presence of God more. When we do that, when we give our attention to God, that is a pivotal, that's a changing moment in our lives. When we stop making worship just another event, when we actually say, God, I see you in this and I want more of it. I want to draw closer to you. And here's one secret. Here's a secret, guys. Once God has our attention, he will start speaking to us. And once we do, we want to just go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Because a lot of times, here's the thing, here's the deal, guys. A lot of times we make our worship services and it's just another event. Another thing that we do is a gathering. Once we come back to church, do you guys come to church for your friends or to worship? Do we, what about our attention to God? What about us giving our attention to God? So I really think this pandemic is God asking us, hey, are you going to give me your attention? Are you going to uh, give me all of your attention or is worship just all smokes and mirrors? Can you really worship without an event? Without these, the loud noises, loud drums, loud everything? Can you really worship God like that? Without anything around you, can you really worship me? I really believe God's trying to ask us that question right now. And so Moses, he comes closer to God and God cries out to him and says, Moses, Moses. And God doesn't say his name once. He says it twice. And actually, throughout scripture, we can see that God actually calls his people not once, but two times. More than once. It speaks importance. He's trying to grab our attention because let's be real, if our parents, you know, like if our parents are calling our names, 
you know, like, what do we do? The first time they call our names, do we answer? No. They have to call us at least two times or three times, and they're like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. What'd you say? Right? If we were in the middle of a game, middle of a watching a show, your mom calls you, it's like, hey, Jay. Ignores. Jay. Ignores. Full name. Chen Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right? I, I, I do that. My mom would always ask me, did you hear me? Did you not hear me the first, first time? I was like, I, I heard you, but, you know, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> right? And I think that's the same thing. That, that's just who we are. And so that's why God understands that. And God will call your name, call us multiple times. And sometimes we're too deaf to not hear our name just once. So sometimes God will poke at you multiple times until he gets your attention. And sometimes God will use whatever, whatever means necessary to get your attention. And so once Moses' um, Moses' attention is towards God, what does how does Moses respond? Here I am, here I am. But more, most likely, it was more like, here I am. Right? He's kind of scared. But either way, he's got his full attention. Verse five: Do not come any closer. God said, take off your sandals for this place where you are standing is holy ground. So Moses would actually develop this relationship with God that we can only begin to ima like imagine because Moses was called a friend of God. And he spoke with God face to face, had this relationship with God and as if he was a close friend. And Moses was actually able to see a portion of the glory of God and at one point, it actually changed him. And then, like, people actually said that Moses' face was glowing, right? Because he had to spend time with the Lord. And But all that relationship started right here. Started right here. That crazy relationship that Moses ended up having started right here. With a respect towards God. With a respect towards God, respect towards the fact that that, la that ground that he was standing on was holy ground. So he takes off his sandal. He actually listens. He actually listens to God. And it's honestly, it's good for us to want to get closer to God. It's very, very good for us to get closer to God. But as we desire to be in God's presence, we shouldn't forget that he, our God, is a holy and righteous God. That our ability to approach his throne was purchased at a price. It did not come for free. But my biggest fear in the church is that we are too relaxed in our relationship with Christ. We, we, sometimes we lack the reverence. We lack the respect that we should give to God. We don't have that healthy fear of the awareness of who God is. We, I think we lost that respect Towards God, yeah, sure, yeah, because yeah, because of the because of what Jesus has done for us, you know, we have a little bit closer relationship with God, and so on and so forth. We understand that God is this Almighty God, He's a loving God. So God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son. Yeah, sure, why not? But do we really understand who God is? Like, really? Do, do we understand that our God is this almighty God that we should give all of our attention or are we just too relaxed? Verse 6. Then he said, I am the God of your father, God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was too afraid to look at God. Are you guys like Moses? Honoring God and respecting God to this degree. Because <clears throat> maybe this morning you guys are here watching this and you're trying to seek the Lord. Maybe you guys are trying to hear from God what God has to say to you or whatever. But before all of that, before any of that, I want to ask you guys this morning. Are you guys seeking God with all of your heart? Do you kneel before God in prayer? You know, do you actually worship, close your eyes and worship and cry out whatever is in your heart to God? Do you raise up your hand and do you find yourself actually crying before him? Because your emotions, it cannot be contained. Right? I'm not asking you guys to have like dramatic explosion of, of like feelings or whatever. I'm not, trying, I'm not telling you guys, oh, if you guys don't do that, you guys are not. I'm not saying any of that, right? I'm not asking you guys to fake it. But I'm asking, 
I'm asking you guys, do you guys have this sense, this awe that you are standing on holy ground as you are before the Lord right now as you're worshiping? And I would say to you, if you do not, if you do not find yourself at awe with God and who God is, I would challenge you. I would challenge you that if you haven't truly experienced his presence, that you need to seek it, that you really do. Because in verse 7, let's go on. It says, the Lord said, I have seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have uh, come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and uh, to bring them out of the land into a good and spacious land. A land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, uh, Hivites, and uh, Jebusites. And now the cries of the Israel, Israelites have reached me, and I have seen the way of the Egyptian oppressing them. So what do we take out of this? God knows. God knows. I don't know what's going on through Moses' heart right now. And you might be wondering this as well, and maybe this relates to you as well, right? You might be thinking, oh, Lord, I have abilities. I have ideas. I have gifts. I want to use it. I want to do all these things for you. But listen, guys, don't think for a second that God doesn't know your ideas, know your thoughts, knows, like, he knows all the hurts that's going on within the people of Israel. He knows. He knows. And don't think for a second that God doesn't have a plan for you. You know, we read in 2 Peter 3, um, chapter 3, 8 to 9, it says, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With, uh, with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. And the Lord is not slow to, in keeping his promise, as some under, understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come in, uh, to repentance. So here's a principle that, that we see as it relates to God. At times, at, at, at his time, it is his ways and not ours, right? It is his ways, his understanding. Because a lot of times we'll say stuff like, oh, God, I want you to use me. I want you to do things. I want you to do all these things according to my way. But, you know, we have to understand that God has his pl plans and he has his understand his way of delivering people. You see, God, God, you see, guys, God will use you if you're not afraid. And I think a lot of times we're, we're afraid of being used by God. You know, because we're, we're thinking, oh, what if God tells me to do this and I'm so uncomfortable of doing this. I don't really want to do this or this or this or this. But here's the thing, if you are rather, if you're delighting, delighted in the fact that God is going to use you, God will carry out his purpose in you and through you. God will do crazy things in you. But if you have fear, God is going to work those things out in you first. God's going to shape you and mold you first. And that was actually happening to Moses as well. Because, you know, in verse 10 it says, So now I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Here, God is calling Moses, right? Roughly 80 years. For 80 years, Moses was out in the wilderness, so for, out by himself. God didn't use him or anything like that. 40 years in Egypt, 40, 40 years in the wilderness, and finally his calling comes. It didn't come when he was in Egypt. It didn't come in any time else because Moses wasn't ready. Moses might have been uh, like ready mentally or whatever. He tried to take action by himself, but it didn't work out. And so in verse 11, Moses actually ends up saying to God, Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Forty years for 40 years, Moses was wondering, like, oh, I'm not going to be used by God. How can I be used by God? How, how, how is this going to happen or whatever? But so who am I? Who am I that's going to do any of this? Who am I? Who, I am a nobody, God. Who am I that I'm going to do this? You see, <laughs> what we see in 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, For my power is made perfect in weakness. God chooses to use the weak and the meek and the foolish 
to confuse the people of the wise, the, the wise people. Like, if you think you ha- you're something, you're someone we, with reputation, you know something, you have credibility, you're like, all those things, but you're not rooted in God, you're not rooted in Christ, then that's nothing. God's not going to use you. God is really not going to use you. Moses chose to be rejected of the world to be accepted by God. And I believe Moses, if he was called to be, you know, leading the people of Israel when he was younger, he probably was, he 100% wasn't ready. Like, I'm sure Moses was trying to do that when he was younger, and that's why he killed that Egyptian, uh, Egyptian slave, uh, slave owner or whatever. And if God used him at that moment, he wouldn't have been ready. He would have been burnt out. And so, guys, right now, I'm sure God is trying to shape you and mold you and create in you a new heart and new being. But listen to what Moses is asking. Moses asked God, who am I that I should go? Moses had this humility. Ended up, finally ended up having this humility of saying, God, who am I that I should be going? In verse 12, it says, and God said, I will be with you. And this will be a sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. When Moses asks God, who am I? Who am I? This shows humility. But in this culture today, when we, if we ask people, like, who am I? Who am I? People will say, hey, let me tell you who you are. Right? You're someone special. Let me tell you how gifted you are. You're so loved. Let me build you up. I'm going to build you up. You're, you're such a great person and all that stuff. But God doesn't answer that question in that way. God doesn't say, hey, Moses, you're, you're such a great guy. That's why I'm going to use you, that you're so amazing. But, Moses, but God answers Moses' Moses's question by saying, I'll be with you. You're no one special. You're really no one special. But I'm going to be with you. So that's why you're going to be special. God answered the right question. God took the focus, Moses' focus off of himself off of his inadequacies, out of his failures, because a lot of times we're going to be, a lot of times whenever we're looking at God and, and trying to say, hey, God, I want to be used by you, but, you know, like, we we'll always look at ourselves, like, God, I'm such a failure, I'm not, I'm, not call, I'm not qualified, I can't do anything that you want me to do. But what God does is we, sh- we focus Moses' eyes back on God. He's saying, hey, I'm calling you to do this, and I'll be with you. And then God takes it a step further and says, Moses said to God, suppose, uh, Moses said to God, I suppose I am uh, to go to Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers uh, has sent me to you. They, and they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? And honestly, this is a very good question, right? In verse 14, God says to Moses, I am who I am. And this is what you're supposed to uh, say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. You know, I'm going to end by, by, by saying this. But you see, Moses, God answered Moses' question by saying, hey, I know you're afraid. I know you're afraid of going to the Israelites. I know you're afraid of doing that. But the I am, the great I am, I have sent you. I am with you. Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? And, he, and so I'm going to read Hebrews 11:27 27 again. By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who was invisible. Guys, faith does not fear. Faith does not fear. Because if you guys have fear, you guys are not going to be able to do anything of God. Seriously, you guys are not able to do anything. God said, I'm going to be with you. So why are we afraid of, doing, of being called by God? And God is going to be doing great things after this whole quarantine is, quarantine, quarantine is over. God is going to actually call you guys to do his work. And right now, I, th- I truly believe it's a time for us to actually build up our faith and humble ourselves and go before God in a reverence, in this honor. And look at God with fear, with respect. That's what I mean by fear. And 2 Corinthians 12, 10 says, This is why for Christ's sake I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardships, in persecution, in difficulties. For when I am weak, 
strength and I am strong. So I wonder what God is calling you guys to do right now. Are you giving Him all of your attention that you might hear God? Right now, I'm really wondering, are you guys truly, are you guys using your time well right now? During this time of, of, of isolation, of staying at home, not, you're not going out. You, sure, you guys have homework, you guys still have to do online stuff, but let's be real, like your online classes probably is not as hard as going to class, going to school. You guys are able to save a lot of time, but what are you doing with your extra time? Yeah, I understand it's easier said than done to read the Bible to get to know God but even right now at this very moment as you guys are worshipping are you guys coming before God in humility, in reverence in respect and I just really want to ask this question do you really know God? Do you know Him? Do you know how amazing He is? I'll ask so many questions but the most important question that for you guys at the end of the day is, do you know Him? And if you don't know Him, if you don't know that you're a child of God, and if you're still stuck in fear, I want you guys to take this time and coming to God and say, God, give me more faith. Let me understand this. Let me walk, step into faith. Because God is going to be using us after this thing is over. God needs workers. I'm not sure if you guys have noticed. God needs people who will do His work. So right now, let's have this time of prayer, asking God for humility, for more faith, to be found in Jesus, to be understanding what it means to be a child of God, what it means not to be afraid of being used by God. And just like Moses took steps of faith and coming before God and humbled himself as well and got rid of any arrogance or anything he had and just said, who am I? Let us, let's pray and say, God, give me that kind of faith. Give me more and more and more faith so I can be used by you so that I can understand that I'm a child of God. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Throughout our lives, throughout this time, there's so many distractions. There's so many things that we're looking at. So many times where we want to just become arrogant. But God, let us be found in you, completely found in you. Let us take steps of faith. Let us understand that we are your child. God, let us understand you. Let us know you. Let us take steps of faith to you more and more on a deeper level let us go beyond what we know right now let us go beyond of where we are god let us not be complacent let us strive for excellence for you let us do something radical something crazy for you god there's gonna be trials there's gonna be hardships but god will trust you we trust in you god with a song <clears throat> to pray over uh, just to pray and ask the Lord that he would deliver you from any fear and just remind you of your identity in him as a child of God I find it appropriate that the story of Moses was used as an example uh, this morning uh, as the bridge of the so- song goes you split the sea so I can walk right through it my fears are drowned in perfect love church sometimes you may not uh, we may not remember but even throughout history, the Lord has delivered us from circumstances that seemed impossible for us to um, avoid in terms of, you know, our, our lives being in danger, um, just things that, things that we feel are impossible for the Lord to deliver. But the Lord has delivered. And maybe in ways we don't always expect. But I invite us, church, if we could just close our eyes as we respond with this song, just to remember that the Lord our God is our comforter. The Lord our God delivers us from fear from shame. You unravel me with melody. You 
surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Love has called my name. I've been born again into a family. Your blood flows through my veins. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. One more time, I'm no longer a slave. No longer a slave to fear, and I am a child of God. I'm no longer, I'm no longer a slave to fear, and I am a child of God. You split the sea. You split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and say, So I am a child of God. Use me to see so I could walk right through it. My fears are drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and say, I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am, I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, let us come before you in reverence and worship and love and respect. Give us more humility on a daily basis, God, as we come worship you. And God, we truly believe this is a time where you're using us. You're using this time to mold us, to shape us, to get to allow us to spend time with you. So God, let us do that. Let us do that. Help us in that, God. 
God, if we have any fears of being used by you or any other fears in our hearts, God, uh, let us, let all that fear just completely disappear. Because you're, in your love, there is no fear. God, we love you so much. Be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Thank you for joining us again. Again, really, don't be a stranger. Don't be a stranger at all. Contact me. Talk to me. Even talk to your teacher. Talk to your friends at church. Text them. Message them. And just still, we can still have this community with one another. And I'm sure your teachers have been contacting you and saying hi to you. So please respond to them as well. Your teachers are very sad if you guys don't respond. Uh, so again, I'll see you guys soon. Don't be a stranger. Okay, bye, guys. I'm trading my sorrows and I'm trading my shame and I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord and I'm trading my sickness and I'm trading my shame and I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord